It's just amazing, isn't it? I think the internet has given us a way that we can make anything about us. Like another thing is, I've got a mate. Everyone have a mate like this. Who, if you mention a big historical event or a news event that happened within our lifetime, they'll tell you where they were that day, right? I'd like, I had lunch with him the other day. His name's Dave, and uh, I mentioned 9/11 in passing, and he went, "9/11. Remember, I was that day." I was like, I don't give a shit, Dave, where you are. I don't, why are you telling me this? Why, ironically, are you trying to hijack history, Dave? He looked all hurt. I went, all right, where were you? He went, karate. I went, see, Dave, this is exactly why I didn't want to know. He said, well, you know, I was in New York six months before that. It makes you think, doesn't it? I was like, no, it doesn't. To be honest, all it makes me think is I wish you'd been there six months later. I was having an argument the other day, right? I was having an argument with my uh, father-in-law and he was moaning about the fact they might be taking away the cold weather payments. I was like, but you live in Alicante. I don't understand. <laughs> the... You're not going to freeze to death on your yacht, okay? No, no, no. We had it a lot tougher in our day than you lot, son. We had it a lot tougher. How's that then? Well, all we got for Christmas was a Satsuma. Uh, yeah, but you've done all right since then, haven't you? You know? Bought your council house for seven quid. That was... Uh... That's a good bit of business, wasn't it? <laughs> Ate all the cod in the North Sea. <laughs> what is it with pensioners and white fish? They just didn't want you to have it. <laughs> Look at you, like how you're young, right? What have you, you've only ever known Pollock. That's your... <laughs> there was a fish once a time called cod. It was plentiful and... <laughs> Genuinely, I think the next big conflict in this country will be a civil war between young people and old people. Genuinely. <laughs> It will be a civil war. It'll be a very weird looking war. I'll give you that, you know. Because young people like to get out very late, don't they? And um, you know, old people like to go to bed very early. So, like, war will only be possible between the hours of two and four in the afternoon. It'll be like the moment Judge Rinder finishes, <laughs> this lady, she's like, right, it's fucking on. We're going to finish for countdown, though. It's harsh. It's harsh. I. I I have empathy for the young generation. Like, they have to live at home till God knows what age, yeah? Living in the family home. They don't need much to survive. They just need Netflix and noodles. They can live off that. And even though they're living in the family household, they're not really an organic part of it, are they? They're always, they're always fucking off upstairs. Like, Dad, Dad, I'm just, uh, Dad, I'm just going upstairs. Dad, is it, is it right if Claire stays? Well, you know, she's your wife and you're 35, so... <laughs> You could take the dogs and the twins with you. <laughs> He's never leaving, Shirley. <laughs> so, you know, while I, have, uh, while I have sympathy for young people, they, I, I still despise them, because <laughs> I was a teacher. I was a teacher. And you know they call it Generation Snowflake, the idea that young people are mollycoddled. And, and it's not their fault, right, it's teachers and parents, but it's hard when you come up against it, man. I was, yeah, I was, I was a teacher. I know there's some people just not happy with that information. <laughs> and I'll be out to teach again in four and a half years. <laughs> I'm just doing this to fill in the time, but... <laughs> I was an English teacher, right? I was an English teacher, and I, I was teaching this class, and the, the head of English came in, and she said, it's all right, Mr. Norcoff, I'll just speak to your class. She was like, okay, kids, uh, this year we're very big, but there are no wrong answers, okay? They're, an, I was like, fucking are, they're fucking are wrong answers. Come on, man. <laughs> Look at them. They're a bottom set. All they've got is wrong answers. They, <laughs> I mean, they're lovely kids, but just... I mean, even the registers are fucking minefields, to be honest. It's, <laughs> and, like, you know, like all liberal ideas, it was underpinned by the right sentiment. It was under... You know... It was compassionate. It was the right thought. But in reality, what it did was it gave certain kids... It emboldened kids to just talk continually, despite not having anything of relevance to say. <laughs> There's one girl called Georgia, right? She'd never read the book, but she always wanted to share her views on the text, nevertheless. Um, and in the end, I got her dad up to school, and the moment I saw her dad, I knew the problem. It was him, right? He was weak as shit. He just... He was, he was pathetic the way he looked at his daughter. He was looking at her like he'd never got over the fact his balls had produced something they could speak. It was... <laughs> tragic. I sat him down, and whatever I said to him about his daughter, so I said, the thing is, right, Mr. Simpson, is, you, is your daughter's obstructing the learning for the slightly quieter girls in the group who have done the work. And he was like, well, you know, bless Georgia. Bless Georgia. Well, the thing is, Mr. Norcott, you know, she's just trying to express herself. I said, it's not that, mate. She just doesn't know any stuff. <laughs> I hate her. And... 
He said, well, you know, the thing is, Mr. Knocker, when I grew up, you know, my dad, he never let me express myself. He was, he was always cutting me off. I can I just stop you there, mate? I, I, said, I said, I think I know the problem. It's you. You never told your daughter, shut the fuck up. I mean, come on, it's an important part of parenting, isn't it? You know, obviously love them, nurture them, but every once in a while go, you know what, you're talking shit, you might want to sit this one out. And while we're at it, no, you shouldn't go on X Factor, right? <laughs> Well, it should be obvious why. You can't sing. Now, I know I cried when you sang Whitney, but those are tears of shame. Do you understand the difference? Do you understand? I know I should be more compassionate. I know, man, but... It's just, I got my parents, both... See, the thing is, both my parents were disabled, right? They just got on with life. That's the thing. That's why I can't... I don't really... I can't really tolerate moaning. Like, my, my parents were disabled. My dad had one arm. He was a disabled man, but he never called himself disabled, you know? Never claimed disability benefit, not even once. And I said to him one day, I said, Dad, why didn't you claim disability benefit? And he said, well, I could walk, can't I? I was like, yeah, that's not the only criteria these days. You should see, the first time he watched the Paralympics, he was furious the whole time, literally. He was like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? What, OCD? OCD, that actually else is synchronised swimming. This is bullshit. You know what this is? Yeah, you only need one arm for javelin anyway, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Waving his one remaining fist to anybody who wasn't just a torso. Like... <laughs> he's not around anymore, my old man. I'm not trying to guilt trip you now, but he's, uh, he's not around. It's sad, I miss him, do you know what I mean? But once they get to a certain age, there is a part of you, and this is, maybe this is a bit brutal to say, is that you are sort of hoping that the, the, the man goes first. Because once, I mean, we've all seen it, once a bloke gets to 80, if the woman dies first, he's, he's fucked, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's a poor bastard. In a week, he's eating dog food in the dark. He doesn't know what's... <laughs> Doesn't know what's going on. I mean, the phone goes off, he shoots it because he's had no jurisdiction there. The best part of three decades. I'm just saying that generation in particular, they rely more on women, don't they? But you know, because the other way, women are a bit more resilient. I mean, if the bloke dies first, the woman's sad, but that's not going to stop her going on the cruise, is it? Oh no, that's a very different situation. Very different. Yeah, well, oh, he was a lovely bloke, but some Lucia, oh, well, come on. I'll Skype the funeral. The Wi-Fi on these boats has come on leaps and bounds. <laughs>